An orogeny is an event that leads to both structural deformation and compositional differentiation of the Earth's lithosphere crust and uppermost mantle at convergent plate margins. An origin or orogenic belt develops when a continental plate crumples and is pushed upwards to form one or more mountain ranges. This involves a series of geological processes collectively called orogenesis. Orogeny is the primary mechanism by which mountains are built on continents. The word orogeny comes from ancient Greek, oros oros, lit, mountain plus genesis, genesis, lit, creation, origin. Although it was used before him, the term was employed by the American geologist G. K. Gilbert in 1890 to describe the process of mountain building as distinguished from a pyrogeny. Topic. Physiography The formation of an origin can be accomplished by the tectonic processes such as oceanic subduction where a continent rides forcefully over an oceanic plate for accretionary orogeny or continental subduction convergence of two or more continents for collisional orogeny. Orogeny usually produces long arcuate from the Latin arcuare to bend like a bow structures, known as orogenic belts. Generally, orogenic belts consist of long parallel strips of rock exhibiting similar characteristics along the length of the belt. Although orogenic belts are associated with subduction zones, subduction tectonism may be ongoing or past processes. The subducting tectonism would consume crust, thicken lithosphere, produce earthquake and volcanoes, and build island arcs in many cases. Geologists attribute the arcuate structure to the rigidity of the descending plate, and island arc cusps relate to tiers in the descending lithosphere. These island arcs may be added to a continental margin during an accretionary orogeny. On the other hand, subduction zones may be reworked at a later time due to lithospheric rifting, leading to amphibolite to granulite facies metamorphism of the thinned orogenic crust. The processes of orogeny can take tens of millions of years and build mountains from plains or from the seabed. The topographic height of orogenic mountains is related to the principle of isostasy, that is, a balance of the downward gravitational force upon an upthrust mountain range composed of light, continental crust material and the buoyant upward forces exerted by the dense underlying mantle. Frequently, rock formations that undergo orogeny are severely deformed and undergo metamorphism. Orogenic processes may push deeply buried rocks to the surface. Sea bottom and near shore material may cover some or all of the orogenic area. If the orogeny is due to two continents colliding, very high mountains can result. See Himalayas. An orogenic event may be studied a, as a tectonic structural event, b as a geographical event, and c as a chronological event. Orogenic events Cause distinctive structural phenomena related to tectonic activity. Affect rocks and crust in particular regions, and happen within a specific period. Topic. Origin or orogenic system In general, there are two main types of origins at convergent plate margins, one, accretionary origins, which were produced by subduction of one oceanic plate beneath one continental plate to result in either continental arc magmatism or the accretion of island arc terrains to continental margins, two, collisional origins, which were produced by collision between two continental blocks, with subduction of one continental block beneath the other continental block. An orogeny produces an origin, but a mountain range foreland basin system is only produced on passive plate margins. The foreland basin forms ahead of the origin due mainly to loading and resulting flexure of the lithosphere by the developing mountain belt. A typical foreland basin is subdivided into a wedge top basin above the active orogenic wedge, the foredeep immediately beyond the active front, a forebulge high of flexural origin and a back bulge area beyond, although not all of these are present in all foreland basin systems. The basin migrates with the orogenic front and early deposited foreland basin sediments become progressively involved in folding and thrusting. Sediments deposited in the foreland basin are mainly derived from the erosion of the actively uplifting rocks of the mountain range, although some sediments derive from the foreland. 
The fill of many such basins shows a change in time from deepwater marine flish style through shallow water to continental molass style sediments. Topic: Orogenic cycle. Although orogeny involves plate tectonics, the tectonic forces result in a variety of associated phenomena, including crustal deformation, crustal thickening, crustal thinning and crustal melting as well as magmatism, metamorphism and mineralization. What exactly happens in a specific origin depends upon the strength and rheology of the continental lithosphere, and how these properties change during orogenesis. In addition to orogeny, the origin once formed is subject to other processes, such as sedimentation and erosion. The sequence of repeated cycles of sedimentation, deposition and erosion, followed by burial and metamorphism, and then by crustal anatexis to form granitic batholiths and tectonic uplift to form mountain chains, is called the orogenic cycle. For example, the Caledonian orogeny refers to a series of tectonic events due to the continental collision of Laurentia with eastern Avalonia and other former fragments of Gondwana in the early Paleozoic. The Caledonian origin resulted from these events and various others that are part of its peculiar orogenic cycle. In summary, an orogeny is an episode of deformation, metamorphism and magmatism at convergent plate margins, during which many geological processes play a role at convergent plate margins. Every orogeny has its own orogenic cycle, but composite orogenesis is common at convergent plate margins. Topic. Erosion Erosion represents a subsequent phase of the orogenic cycle. Erosion inevitably removes much of the mountains, exposing the core or mountain roots metamorphic rocks brought to the surface from a depth of several kilometers. Isostatic movements may help such exhumation by balancing out the buoyancy of the evolving origin. Scholars debate about the extent to which erosion modifies the patterns of tectonic deformation see erosion and tectonics. Thus, the final form of the majority of old orogenic belts is a long arcuate strip of crystalline metamorphic rocks sequentially below younger sediments which are thrust atop them and which dip away from the orogenic core. An origin may be almost completely eroded away, and only recognizable by studying old rocks that bear traces of orogenesis. Origins are usually long, thin, arcuate tracts of rock that have a pronounced linear structure resulting in terrains or blocks of deformed rocks, separated generally by suture zones or dipping thrust faults. These thrust faults carry relatively thin slices of rock, which are called naps or thrust sheets, and differ from tectonic plates from the core of the shortening origin out toward the margins, and are intimately associated with folds and the development of metamorphism. Topic. Biology In the 1950s and 1960s the study of orogeny, coupled with biogeography the study of the distribution and evolution of flora and fauna, geography and mid-ocean ridges, contributed greatly to the theory of plate tectonics. Even at a very early stage, life played a significant role in the continued existence of oceans, by affecting the composition of the atmosphere. The existence of oceans is critical to seafloor spreading and subduction. Topic. Relationship to mountain building Mountain formation occurs through a number of mechanisms. Mountain complexes result from irregular successions of tectonic responses due to seafloor spreading, shifting lithosphere plates, transform faults, and colliding, coupled and uncoupled continental margins. Large modern orogenies often lie on the margins of present-day continents. The Alleghenian, Appalachian, Laramide, and Andean orogenies exemplify this in the Americas. Older inactive orogenies, such as the Algaman, Penachean and Antler, are represented by deformed and metamorphosed rocks with sedimentary basins further inland. Areas that are rifting apart, such as mid-ocean ridges and the East African Rift, have mountains due to thermal buoyancy related to the hot mantle underneath them. This thermal buoyancy is known as dynamic topography. 
In strike slip origins, such as the San Andreas Fault, restraining bends result in regions of localized crustal shortening and mountain building without a plate margin wide orogeny. Hotspot volcanism results in the formation of isolated mountains and mountain chains that look as if they are not necessarily on present tectonic plate boundaries, but they are essentially the product of plate tectonism. Regions can also experience uplift as a result of delamination of the orogenic lithosphere, in which an unstable portion of cold lithospheric root drips down into the asthenospheric mantle, decreasing the density of the lithosphere and causing buoyant uplift. An example is the Sierra Nevada in California. This range of fault block mountains experienced renewed uplift due to abundant magmatism after a delamination of the orogenic route beneath them. Finally, uplift and erosion related to a pyrogenesis, large scale vertical motions of portions of continents without much associated folding, metamorphism, or deformation, can create local topographic highs. Mount Rundle on the Trans-Canada Highway between Banff and Canmore provides a classic example of a mountain cut in dipping layered rocks. Millions of years ago a collision caused an orogeny, forcing horizontal layers of an ancient ocean crust to be thrust up at an angle of 50 to 60 degrees. That left Rundle with one sweeping, tree-lined smooth face, and one sharp, steep face where the edge of the uplifted layers are exposed. Topic. History of the concept Before the development of geologic concepts during the 19th century, the presence of marine fossils in mountains was explained in Christian contexts as a result of the biblical deluge. This was an extension of Neoplatonic thought, which influenced early Christian writers. The 13th century Dominican scholar Albert the Great posited that, as erosion was known to occur, there must be some process whereby new mountains and other land forms were thrust up, or else there would eventually be no land. He suggested that marine fossils in mountainsides must once have been at the seafloor. Orogeny was used by Amans Gressley and Jules Thurman 1854 as orogenic in terms of the creation of mountain elevations, as the term mountain building was still used to describe the processes. Elie de Beaumont 1852 used the evocative jaws of a vice theory to explain orogeny, but was more concerned with the height rather than the implicit structures created by and contained in orogenic belts. His theory essentially held that mountains were created by the squeezing of certain rocks. Eduard Zeus recognized the importance of horizontal movement of rocks. The concept of a precursor geosyncline or initial downward warping of the solid earth Hall, 1859, prompted James Dwight Dana 1873, to include the concept of compression in the theories surrounding mountain building. With hindsight, we can discount Dana's conjecture that this contraction was due to the cooling of the Earth a.k.a. the cooling Earth theory. The cooling Earth theory was the chief paradigm for most geologists until the 1960s. It was, in the context of orogeny, fiercely contested by proponents of vertical movements in the crust similar to tephrotectonics, or convection within the asthenosphere or mantle. Gustav Steinmann 1906 recognized different classes of orogenic belts, including the alpine-type orogenic belt, typified by a flish and molasse geometry to the sediments, ophiolite sequences, tholeitic basalts, and a nap-style fold structure. In terms of recognizing orogeny as an event, Leopold von Buch recognized that orogenies could be placed in time by bracketing between the youngest deformed rock and the oldest undeformed rock, a principle which is still in use today, though commonly investigated by geochronology using radiometric dating. Based on available observations from the metamorphic differences in orogenic belts of Europe and North America, H. J. Zwert 1967, proposed three types of origins in relationship to tectonic setting and style, cordillerotype, alpinotype, and herkunotype. His proposal was revised by W. S. Pitcher in 1979 in terms of the relationship to granite occurrences. Kawood et al. 2009 categorized orogenic belts into three types, accretionary, collisional, and intracratonic. Notice that both accretionary and collisional origins developed in converging plate margins. 
In contrast, Hercunotype origins generally show similar features to intracratonic, intracontinental, extensional, and ultrahot origins, all of which developed in continental detachment systems at converged plate margins. Accretionary origins, which were produced by subduction of one oceanic plate beneath one continental plate for arc volcanism. They are dominated by calc alkaline igneous rocks and high T, low P metamorphic facies series at high thermal gradients of greater than 30 degrees Celsius per kilometer. There is a general lack of ophiolites, migmatites, and abyssal sediments. Typical examples are all circum Pacific origins containing continental arcs. Collisional origins, which were produced by subduction of one continental block beneath the other continental block with the absence of arc volcanism. They are typified by the occurrence of blue schist to eclogite facies metamorphic zones, indicating high P, low T metamorphism at low thermal gradients of. See also.